What's up guys and welcome back to my Let's Play series for The Outer Worlds. In this episode we're going to be taking on Parvati's final companion mission which is called Don't Bite the Sun. We have to help Parvati prepare for a date with Jun Lei, which is easier said than done because everything has to be absolutely perfect. Hope you enjoy and please remember to like and subscribe. Hey Captain, I got a thing I want to ask you. It's kind of big. Sure, what do you need? I was thinking about what you said before. After we went to the Lost Hope on the Groundbreaker, I reckon you're right. I think I'm ready to stop fretting and fussing and and ask Jun Lei to go steady straight out. And I'm thinking of doing it here, on the ship. That's sweet. How can I help? I was kind of hoping you'd offer. The thing is, I can't ask her over like, like this. I mean, look at me. I'm all covered in engine grease, and I ain't showered in nigh on a week. I smell like sweat most days, and, well, don't look too close at my fingernails. I was thinking, hoping, we could stop by Groundbreaker for bath supplies. Easy enough. We'll head straight over. I mean, only if you're not busy. Or when you're heading through Groundbreaker for something else. You don't gotta change plans on account of me. Anyhow, next time we dock in Groundbreaker, let me know. Because I want to come with. Alrighty guys, we just landed here on the Groundbreaker, and now all we have to do is head over to what appears to be Gladys and buy these bath supplies. Should be pretty easy. But I have a sneaking suspicion that we're probably going to be doing other things for Parvati. Nothing can simply be this easy. If you're here for this week's Magazine Club meeting, you're a touch late. My engineer is looking to do some deep cleansing, wants to impress Chief Jun Lei. I think I got just the thing, my dear. A few years back, Auntie Cleo's put out a whole makeover kit, and I snagged a couple for myself. High-grade shampoo and conditioner, scrubby brush, a nice lotion, that sort of thing. I still got them, too. What's the scrubby brush for? Cleaning around your nails, sweetheart. Gets the engine grease out. Makes your hands soft. Most folk don't got the time. Or bathtubs for such. Me included. I'll let you have one on clearance. You want rosish, mock apple and cinnamon, or refurbished ship? An engineer might like refurbished ship. Scrub parts and all that. Like grit and grime covered over with cleaner, you mean? Well, that's a smell that means we're really going places. I'll just wrap that up for you, since it's for a special occasion. I'll pay for that, ma'am. Thanks for being so helpful. You're welcome, dear. All right, see you later. Anytime, sweetheart. You know where to find me. Groundbreaker's safe from melting to bits now. Lots of good people can rest easy because of you. So, there's your soap. Oh, thanks, Captain. I'm gonna put these someplace safe. In her messages, June Lay said her mama used to make this dish for Monarch. Dustback casserole. Saltuna and Xeno Gold needle mushrooms. And then for dessert, there's a thing called, uh, sweetheart cake. It's made with almond paste and wax gourds. There's gotta be some place in Stellar Bay that can bake a casserole. And I heard tell there's a Rizzo's town near there called Cascadia, what specializes in sweets. All right, we'll figure it out. Thanks, Captain. I know I'm asking an awful lot, but I'm sure it's going to be worth it. Yeah, sure, you're my favorite crew member anyways. I'll see you guys on Monarch. How you been doing, Yoko? If you ever want to talk about what happened, my ears are open. I appreciate it, but I've just got to let it settle a while. Maybe chase it off with a drink. Besides, you know what? I've got a new crew. That doesn't make it any less painful, but it does help distract me from time to time. Well, don't worry. I won't let us get dead. Whoa, by the stars, my poor heart. I just about pissed my jumpsuit. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. Most people don't. Besides, this place is enough to try anyone's nerves. How's that? Where should I begin? With the oversized mantisaurs? Or perhaps the rap spewing acid at our walls? The board was right. This place isn't fit for human habitation. 
and I was a fool for staying. My engineer is looking to get a dustback casserole. Can you cook one of those? That was a real popular meal 10, 20 years back, before the board took tail and ran. These days, everybody's had a belly full of salt tuna. They all want borst, and the mushrooms, well, not many venture out of town, what with the monsters hereabouts. I can whip one up for you, but it'll cost. Here's a menu. Oh, yikes. I can't cover this much, Captain. You take me for an idiot. No damn casserole's worth that much. Try again, and try harder. What? No, Captain, I, I don't want you to do it this way. It's alright, miss. I'm a coward at heart. Made that clear from the outset. Look, Captain, this is the best I can do without putting myself out of business. I'm glad you saw a reason. 2,000 bits is much more reasonable. I'm mighty glad you reckon so. This is gonna take about an hour in the oven. Nothing I can do to speed it. That's just how cooking works. I'm surprised we didn't actually have to go out and get the ingredients ourselves. There we are. Now, if you don't mind, I really need to take a leak. My belly's gurgling just to smell it, Mr. Raymond. Thank you so much. A pleasure to help such a charming young lady. You're a gentle soul, miss. Be careful with this one, all right? He's kind of a brute. Oh, gosh. My tom's rumbling just smelling that casserole. Alrighty, we still need to get dessert sorted, so let's take a look at the map. Ah, we're going down here, eh? Alright, we might as well just fast travel. I'll see you guys there. So I think we cleared this place already, if I remember correctly. No red dots in the map yet. Oh, here we go. Let's be real quiet and use a shotgun when we get close. Heads down. His buddies in here. I'm pretty sure Parvati called these sweetheart cakes or something, so I'm assuming something like a Twinkie. Aren't those cakes just about the cutest little things you ever seen? Looked like orange slices to me. The dust bat casserole Mr. Raymond made smells incredible. Oh, I kind of want to take a little taste, but I'm gonna be strong. Now look how cute these cakes from Cascadia are. Someone even traced little hearts in them. Oh, I guess that settles dinner. Thanks for hauling me all over creation, Captain. You're welcome. Shouldn't you get ready for June Lay now? Well, I was gonna, but then it hit me. I got this nice meal all planned out with music, and I got that soap to scrub up with, but I don't got nothing nice to wear, Captain. Do you really need all this, or are you just putting off the date? Maybe you're right, and I'm, I'm stalling a bit. But maybe I also need to, so as I can work up the courage. There's this place I heard of in Byzantium. Jolliker's Haberdashery. I bet I could find something nigh on perfect at a place like that. Alright, we'll swing by when we can. Thanks, Captain. I know I've been asking a lot. But you help me out every time. You're the best. Welcome back guys, and I was just doing a little bit of shopping there and seeing if we could potentially buy any weapons to upgrade our arsenal. And the answer is, not really. I did make one small purchase, but I don't think it's really going to make too much of a difference. So instead of using the sniper rifle now, we'll use something semi-automatic. You, with the hips, over here. Let me take a closer look at you. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh. Don't speak. Hold that posture for a moment while I admire you. You have a natural contraposto, my dear. The way you rest your weight against your hip suggests a certain rugged charisma possessed only by the mighty primal and the well-traveled spacer. Splendid. I love it. You can tell that all by the way I'm standing? Your walk. Your posture. The cut of your clothes. You carry yourself with the bearing of a noble but you dress like a barbarian. How deliciously outré. I'm Celeste Jolicoeur, and you, my dear, are exactly what Byzantium needs. It's like you read my mind. Darling, you and that brutish swagger of yours have been on my mind the moment you stepped into my studio. 
I'm working on a new line of clothing that will shock this city to its core, and I'd like your help. What do you say, my dear? Care to make history with me? You've got a pretty high opinion of someone you just met. Everything I need to know can be deduced from a first impression. You're an outsider. You're exotic. You carry a whiff of barbarism and adventure. You're the embodiment of everything I want in my new line. Uh, I'll think about it. Consider it a standing offer. My engineer is going on a date and she needs a fine outfit. You don't gotta be so forward about my reasons, Captain. Let me get a good look at you. Turn around, please, darling. My word. Such muscular shoulders. You're a vision, dear. Uh, I am no such thing, ma'am. Nonsense. You're absolutely lovely. Chin up now. I have just the thing for you. Let me do a back of the envelope calculation. Materials, labor, licensing and copyright. There. She's a freaking engineer. You think she can afford that? She just needs to impress her true love. Love? That's the ultimate luxury, darling. Love. <laughs> oh, gracious me. I don't get why that's funny, ma'am. Oh, my cherub. Who woos for love anymore? That's so... precious. All right, Captain. Here is the absolute best I can do for you. I guess we can swing 3,000 bits. There are some things I simply cannot skimp on, darling. Such a lovely young lady deserves the best. Now stand back. Back, back! I'll enter the settings and get these machines spinning. You'll be broke to bespoke in nearly an hour. And there we are, my darling girl. I wish you a splendiferous evening. And if you don't mind my asking, have you any interest in modeling? What? Oh, no, ma'am. All them eyes staring at me? I couldn't. No way, no how. I get scared just thinking on it. I wish you weren't so shy, my Violet. You truly are beautiful. I hope your date sees that as clearly as I. We're gonna be going now. Alright, level 27. What should we do? Um, I'm thinking that we do this, Determination. So maybe we can work our way to 80 with the final level, because we're almost through with this game. Oh, can you believe this outfit? It's so handsome, I'm almost afraid to touch it. Well, I guess that's everything then. After all this time, I can... I just have to actually do it now. You know, there's there's a part Jun Lei's been looking for to fix up the air cyclers. They only carried them on big colony ships, like the Hope. Parvati, making every little thing perfect isn't going to change how Jun Lei feels. I know. For a while, it, it felt like everything I did was a little bit of help. And it meant I didn't have to ask her to be mine. Not yet. Not for real. Next time we dock with Groundbreaker, I'm doing it. I'll send June a message and ask her over. Oh, this is real scary, Captain. I'm grateful for all you've done. I guess that means we're heading to the Groundbreaker. I'll see you guys there. Some crew members are causing a disturbance on the ship. We've arrived at the Groundbreaker. Oh, so it looks like we have to talk to her inside the ship. So she's going to handle things from here on out. I think that's all for the best as well. Alright. She's on her way. How do I look? Where's your 3,000-bit dress? Oh, my hands have finally stopped shaking. Alright, alright. Deep breath. Here I go. Let's go see if we can snoop. You might want to consider changing your clothes more often. I wonder if the other crew members are giving them some space because they generally tend to stick in that area. I think that's your answer. Hey, you got a minute? Anyhow, so I told him, Dad, I'm a big girl now. I ain't need your help. 
I can do it on my lonesome. What did he say to that? Have at it then. And he handed me his favorite wrench, the one he used for the canner. He's probably half as tall as I was. He didn't scold you for talking back to him? Nah, he was never like that. I always thought it was funny when I'd get indignant about something. Then he'd watch me do whatever it was, make sure I didn't get hurt, but he'd never interfere. I learned a lot that way. I wish I could have met him. Anyone who helped shape you must have been a special person. I think we could be missing something here. June, call me pretty. Captain. My father and I were often at loggerheads. He had notions of how the station should be run, and I had others. He was fond of saying, you think Groundbreaker pays for itself, someone's got to cover the bills, when I chafed against his deference to the board. Sounds like he was afraid of him. He was, and he was right to be. Didn't mean I had to like it. We are definitely missing something here. Maybe we should check the objectives. Um, Checking on the date. Oh, we have to leave the ship. Okay. That's why we aren't progressing with the quest. Alright, I think that we have to go out and maybe just come right back in. Some crew members... Now, hold on. What happens if we hit the wall? Okay, Captain, she's gone. Did it go well? I'm near about vibrating. I'm so excited. So she got here, and after a few minutes she said... Hey, do you have some new parts? And I was like, nah, I used a new soap. And then she just sort of touched my arm real gentle-like and called the cut of my outfit elegant. I couldn't hear the rest on account of my heart was beating so hard. Then I led her into the kitchen. I think she about cried when she saw the spread. So you laid out the meal and brought June in and started the music? She stood stock still and just said, oh, real soft. Oh, and let me tell you, I was sweating. And then she blinked and said, Is that dustback casserole? I told her how we got Mr. Raymond to bake it for us, so it was double authentic. Made by a real live... Monar monarchian? Monarchist? Monarch person. So the meal went well. The dessert, too? Well, we talked a bunch over dinner about the things we learned just through messages, stuff we repaired, how I taught her to salvage, and she taught me to build. When I brung out the sweetheart cakes, June, she got a little teary, said she had a thing she needed to say. But I stopped her because I wanted to say it first. I never felt so bold, Captain. And? I told her about how she made me feel. Bold like I acted. Strong. Smarter and kinder than I am on my lonesome. I listed all the things I liked about her. And then she pulled out a paper and read a speech. She, she talked about the things she admired about me, like my cleverness and my humor and how it made her want to be more open. What happened next? Don't leave me in suspense. Anyhow, when she wrapped up, I asked her to be my girlfriend. And Captain, she said yes! What about your disinterest in physical affection? We talked about it some. I told her I wasn't sure how it'd work, how I've had a bad time of it in the past. She said we'll take it as it comes. Fix things together. Share meals. Talk. Maybe she could rub my shoulders when they're sore. I said I might like that. Sounds like things went really well for you. Congratulations. It's all on your account, you know. Imagine if you'd never taken me out of Edgewater. I'd have never met Jun Lei at all. I don't know nothing about the Vicar's capital P plan, but you've sure changed my life. So, if you don't mind... I'm just going to head to my cabin and happy screaming to my pillow for like an hour. <laughs>